Going live, going live. Hey everybody, good afternoon. We are at the Comics Workshop headquarters desk. I'm Merrick Bennett. Got my hands, got my pencil, got my inking pen, got my eraser, got my paper of any size here. This is uh, just copier paper. And I'm gonna be doing some, uh, some doodles today. Uh, we'll jump right into it. So let's see. First step here. Um, we're going to do a. I'm going to do some knot designs, some sort of abstract relaxation noodles. You can kind of clear your mind and draw a roundish shape. It doesn't have to be a circle. That's the first step, though. Just drawing a round shape. And uh, next step would be tracing around that to give it like a noodle thickness. And this tracing is a cool little practice to do, trying to follow the line you just drew, but not quite, right next to it. Just attuning your hand to drawing alongside something. Right? All right. If you're out there, if you're joining us on Facebook or uh, the YouTubes or something, um, go ahead and make a comment. I'm not sure if anybody can hear me. Um, but feel free to make comments and suggestions. So you can draw a pencil circle, then you can follow along it. And let's try that again. Let's make it sort of not so circular though, this time kind of blobby. Now we'll follow along that. And we'll trace, not quite tracing, tracing alongside, like going alongside the line we made. That looks kind of interesting. It's starting to take on some character, right? Actually, I have somewhere here, I have a model for this, right? a little rubber band. And I noticed that uh, it doesn't have to just be a shape. It can actually cross over itself. Whoops. But when it crosses over, you see how one of these pieces of the band goes over the other piece. So actually, let's try that. We'll make a single cross over, little infinity sign there. And then we'll trace along this. Now see, we're gonna have to make a decision here. One of these arms of the rubber band will go over the other. So I can go in with my eraser and erase just those crossover lines and you get this nice, actually let's go in and shade under that a little bit. You get a nice sense of layering then. And this is this is so different looking from this because it looks like it's tucking under. It starts to have layers to it. Um, and we can actually do that. You can cross over a couple times. Now, here's the rule we're going to observe today. Actually, I'll do this in ink so you can see it. I will trace along either side of this line to give it to make it a, a thick noodle shape, right? Nice and thick, right around that line there. So when it comes to this piece here, if it goes under once, the next time it comes to a piece, it's gonna go over. That's what makes it interesting. That's what tucks it in and makes it a knot, or in this case, just a twisted loop, rather than just a, a, a string, one string over another. See in this one, it goes under, then over. And that works out here because this one goes over and then under and it'll come around and be over, and it'll always, always alternate. That's the one hard and fast rule we're gonna keep here that's gonna order whatever kind of mess we get here. That looks kind of cool. So you can actually go back to this first loop. So, so we've got our under, over, under, over. And we can actually go back to this first loop here and add another loop. And, and let's, let's make it a little different. We'll go out where this loop comes in, in where this loop comes out, out where this loop comes in, in where this loop comes out, and so on. There you go. And that's two loops, but they, we can intertwine them. It could just be one loop on top of another, but if we intertwine them, let me, let me come in with ink now. It's much easier to see with ink. I'm gonna get the same effect with the ink. So if I go over here, I'm gonna go under here. See that? So it goes over, under. I'll even do the part that's, for every over, there has to be an under, right? And for every under, there has to be an over. So under here means over here, means under here. 
under, over, under. That means this one goes under, over, under. And each time I come to an under, I just stop until I've drawn the next part. Under, over, under. And something about that pattern, it makes an interesting intertwined. These are two locked loops. You couldn't separate them just by lifting them. You would have to cut one of them, break at least one of them, because they're entwined. It's fundamentally different in, 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 its, in its shape from two loops sitting on top of each other. And as long as I keep that pattern going, it looks right and they lock together like that. And there's something really satisfying about just kind of concentrating, following the pattern and having it come out like that. Beautiful, two intertwined loops, right? We can get a similar effect over here with this, we, we did our infinity sign, right? And then we thickened it around the outside. Well, we also have a crossing here, but we can put a second, let's just put a circle right around here, right? So that's basically this shape, infinity sign and a circle around the X. And then we'll entwine these two. So basically this circle shape, if I double it, will be a little donut there, but let's entwine them with our ink. Right now you can see the shapes. We're gonna entwine them. Now remember, here we had, if I'm, if I'm following this over, that means it has to be under so that I keep my pattern. Under, over, under. That means this is over here. So that means it'll be under here. Let's see if the pattern holds. Under, over, under, there we go. That means under, over, look at that, there's the over. We need it right in place. As long as, as long as they, as long as each place they meet, there's only two of these noodles meeting, that pattern will hold. This is under, that means it's over here, comes around and it's under, under, over, under, because it's an alternating pattern. As long as you keep that pattern, you'll have entwined loops. There's something really satisfying about seeing them come together. Let's go back in. I'm just kind of curious if we add a little bit of the shading with a pencil on all the unders. I'm imagining the light coming in from above. So I'll just add a little bit of shading each time it passes under, kind of below the unders. There we go. And that makes it look even more entwined. Or if you like, you can choose one of these loops and give it a decoration like say dots all along it. That helps your eyes see that it's a different piece of noodle, a different piece of loop that's entwined here. That looks really cool. I like the, uh, I like the variety that gives it. Then I can really see how they entwine and how they're interlocked. Let's try something a little bit more noodly naughty. Let's see, naughtish. So let's see, I'll try something circular out. Oh, you know what we can do? We can get this effect with a single loop, right? We found that this was, let me go in and dot one of these with my inking marker, just to see how different they are. There we go. So this is, two loops intertwined, but we can get a similar effect with a single loop. And I'll show you how we can do that. And just loop it around itself. There we go. The, the spotted noodle and the clear noodle. So, okay, I'm going back to pencil here. All right, so in this open space here, let's see, I'm gonna start a noodle and it's gonna go in and out and in and out as it weaves around sort of a big circular area. It doesn't have to be circular even, does it? And instead of going back to its start, I'm gonna cross under where it goes, uh, cross in where it goes out, out where it goes in and entwine them like that other one above. And now I'm gonna aim for that starting point. So this is actually a big single noodle that wraps around itself like that and we'll entwine it together. 
Let's see. Oh, let's do, let's go one step further though. We have to add all the noodles in before we start inking. So let's see, let's see if we can get, let's try like a square one, uh, an angled one that comes in here and goes out, in and out, in and out. As long as each crossing is only a, two lines crossing. I don't, that is, I don't wanna come in here and hit that crossing point with a third line. That will really confuse things. So I stay away from other crossing points. And each crossing point where the, the noodles touch, there's only two noodles touching at any point. Then I'm fine. Then I can do my over, under, over, under. Oh, we'll bring this one right back here. You can experiment with squares and circles. Let's see how that works out. It'll take a little longer. So let's just pick a point. Let's pick a point right up here at the top. And we'll start making this noodle with an over. That'll cross over. That means here it'll go under. That means here this one goes over. And my one rule is I just keep alternating that. So here it'll go, it just went under. So here it'll go over, and under again. Now, because this one went over here, it'll have to go under this one. And there that one is going over. As long as each over is followed by an under, I can tuck them in like that. See how I'm tucking them under? There we go. I'm tucking this one under by drawing this one over it. And as this one comes along, I'll stop just before I hit that intersection and tuck it under. I know because it was an over here, it has to be an under here. And that means because this is an over, it's gonna be under and the whole pattern will keep itself going. Oh, this is gonna look so beautiful once it's all entwined together. And then, oh, that looks really cool. This is a braid, isn't it? Under, over, it's really kind of dangerous to be talking as you're trying to do these patterns because last night I was drawing one. I'll show you where I made a mistake in one of these. In a moment, let me just finish a couple more turns here. Over, under. Over, under. You can kind of go ahead like this, and that might keep you safe from making a silly mistake. Over, under, over, under. Oh, it works out. It's amazing. The noodles, as long as you follow the pattern, they can predict and they can keep themselves sorted out. As long as you follow that over, under pattern. But if you make a mistake, you're going to find the mistakes up ahead just keep proliferating. There are more and more of them. That's looking really cool. This is like, oh, it's like a wreath, an entwined wreath. I like how that looks. Last night I was, we were hanging out on the Patreon and doodling and I was putting stars out and doing knots all around them. And I got all tangled up here and I had to sort of jury rig a way out of it. But so here you'll see there's a lot of over, over, over to correct a mistake I made way back here. The, uh, the knots kind of, if you're following the pattern, the knots kind of predict what happens way far ahead. For instance, I could work this one way far ahead. Over, under, over, under, over, under. And even though there are three, well, two really, but three cycles here. Two noodles. The three go rounds, I guess. That over under pattern will always predict just where the right overs and unders have to be. And they'll keep themselves straightened out. Or not straight, but in order. That's what makes it an orderly knot. There's something really pleasing to the eye when you come to this and you know somebody's put some attention and care into it and ordered these knots. So even if it's kind of a tangle, a visual tangle, it's got a, a, an order underlying it. Maybe that's why if I just take like 10 or 15 minutes to doodle one of these shapes, 
my brain feels a little better able to go back to my work and face the day and do my go back to my to-do list and get all my my other comics projects done because I've sort of put my thoughts in order by putting my my noodles in order here. And this will work out if I follow that pattern as long as over follows is followed by under is followed by over is followed by under this will work out and I know that if I work back around this way it'll come out to the right sequence here because of that just mathematical certainty of the alternating it's like even odd even odd it's over under over under now this works for loops and you'll have to experiment if it's not a closed loop, but there are ends involved, right? Like if this didn't come back to its beginning, but it kind of trailed off into the center, you might find interesting things happen then. You'll have to experiment with that. It's getting a little tight in here, so I have to really focus to keep my over under pattern way it's supposed to go or else it won't work out. Let's see if this is gonna work out. We're getting close. Over, under. Over, look at that, under. The noodles don't lie. If they come out not fitting, it's probably because I made a mistake somewhere, but they work over, under, over, under, and they all lock together perfectly entwined. And then you can put something you, 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 uh, thinking of or love or care about or want to add into your design here. I've been out, I was just out before this, out at my bird feeder, as, as you know, feeding my little friends, the chickadees. I have been out there every day and they have gotten to the point where they'll come right up and eat seeds out of my hand if I sit very, very still. So I'll put a little cartoon chickadee in here Maybe a little heart, and then we can ink that in. The other cool effect I like to do with this is, whoops, talking and inking, kind of dangerous. Got that head a little, maybe this chickadee's crest is up slightly. Um, the other thing I like to do with this is get out some colored pencils or some markers. And you can really come up with some cool colors and color each of these noodles a different color. And you'll get a really beautiful effect with them intertwined, with those colors all intertwined together. Oh boy, I've got some chickadee stories to draw too from out at the bird feeder. Chickadees, nut hatches, all the little birds eating out there. It is cold winter time. Maybe I'll add a couple snowflakes in here. There you go. The other thing I like to do with this is um, you can come in with your pencil and you can actually get a nice effect by shading. And you can do this with colors too. You can shade under. See that? And that kind of brings out the shape. Doesn't that look like it's sort of a, a solid, well, not a donut, a crazy loop shape sitting on top of the paper there. You can shade in there a little darker right under it. Try shading off to the side. It's like a light shining on it, right? You can really play with your shading here. And a little bit of shading with a pencil will really make that, make that shape pop out there. Um, we can probably get a similar effect here. Actually, let me try this with a little bit of color. I have a blue pencil here. I'll come in here, try adding a little blue to the snow, and I'll tuck in that blue all around the noodles there. It's like the blue light shining off the snow there. There's sort of a, a, a blue shadow to the snow on a really sunny day here. And I'll tuck that in there. See how that kind of makes the noodles look a little more solid? This is a very light blue, so I should probably get out a darker blue to really do that. 
But you can play with colors like that. You can decorate your noodles like we did here. I may go in and do that. So any chance I get, whenever I have a quiet moment, I, I pull out some paper like this and I do a little doodle, come up with a little design. I always feel a lot better afterwards. Just feel like things are in order a little more because these little, these little tangled knots make a little more sense. It's a good way to decorate little notes to people and stuff. Maybe we'll shade in this chickadee heart too. Now remember also, if you want to hide your tracks a bit, you might want to come in here and erase these lines. Oh, I should have done this before I started penciling. <laughs> but you can erase your pencil lines and you'll be left with just your beautiful inked noodle knots. Oh, that looks really nice. Kind of want it to be shining. Well, really nice to draw with you folks. Well, I see we have uh, some, some bird fans here. Felicia says, tit mice and nuthatches are my favorites. Yeah, the nuthatches, they were the first of my birds to come and eat right out of my hands. Um, that nut hatch, I think not so much because she's friendly, but because she's like really hungry. She's all business. And that nut hatch, when I put my hand out the first time uh, that I tried it, she came right up and grabbed a seed and flew off. They're scatter hoarding all their seeds all around in the woods. All right. Really nice to draw with you folks. Thanks for giving it a try. Good luck with your with your tracings, your noodle knots. Um, and let me know what kind of designs you make. I'm going to finish up my, my crazy knot here and maybe I'll post it. Maybe I'll color it or maybe I'll post it as a coloring page. I've got some ideas of how to finish that one up. And I'm thinking I'll do a lot more designs incorporating this, this sort of structure and order around my little birds and trees that I've been doodling out in the backyard. Good to be drawing, keep drawing, keep keep drawing, keep uh, designing, keep exploring, keep trying things out. Um, yeah, and, oh, thanks, Liz. Yeah, keep encouraging people. Liz and Felicia were in a class this summer or this fall. Hope you're working on your family story. Ah, yeah, I can't wait to see how your comics are coming out. Um, I'll see you folks over on the Patreon or over on the website. Got some new videos coming out this week about um, US law that I think I really want to get out there. So enjoy, um, check them out, share them. Uh, head on over to the Patreon if you want to help make these live draws possible. Um, and we will see you folks soon. Thanks, patrons. Thanks, everybody.